I am California of the past. I am California of the past. I am California of the past. My name is Joyce Buckland. I was born and raised in the Rio Linda area and I continue to live there to this day. My family, the Kranz family from Minnesota, immigrated in 1925. They came out with the Suburban Fruit Lands Company and purchased property with the intention of raising chickens. The first inhabitants of this region were the Nisanon tribe of the Southern Maidu Indians. Their territory extended north of the American River and east of the Sacramento River to the foothills of the Sierra Nevada. Many artifacts have been found along the banks of the Dry Creek left by the Nisanon as they were passing through the area while hunting and fishing. In 1821, Mexico revolted against Spanish rule and made California a province of Mexico in 1822. The Mexican government, with a lavish hand, made over 600 land grants, one of those becoming the Rancho del Paso. In the northwest corner of this land grant lay the future town site of Rio Linda. In 1910, the Rancho del Paso land grant was sold by its owners, Ben Ally Hagen and his partner Lloyd Tevis. Part of the property was purchased by Alva C. Roebuck, who was later the co-founder of Sears Roebuck. He laid out a town site about a mile east of Rio Linda and named it the Rio Linda Colony. He is credited with giving Rio Linda its name. However, nothing came of this colony and in 1911, Mr. Roebuck sold the property to the Sacramento Suburban Fruitlands Company of Minneapolis, Minnesota. They in turn advertised the lots extensively throughout Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, the Dakotas, and Canada. The advertisements touted fertile soil as suitable for all kinds of fruits and gardens, having abundant water, a wonderful climate, and convenient transportation by rail and road to Sacramento and San Francisco. The town and outlying area grew quickly, and orchards of almonds, cherries, peaches, pears, and olives were planted. In 1917, a one-room school building was constructed. Also at that time, they built their first railroad station, and a fourth class post office was established. In 1923, they purchased their first fire truck. By 1918, the residents concluded that the land was not profitable for growing fruit or orchards of any type. This was a difficult situation because the land contained a layer of hard pan just underneath the soil. As a result of this, many of the residents took up poultry business. From 1930 until the 1960s, Rio Linda was one of the largest egg producing regions in the nation. The Rio Linda Poultry Producers Association was established and they did over $2 million worth of business in the 1950s. My parents had one of the smaller chicken ranches and they raised 9,000 chickens. Rio Linda continues to grow. By 1990, there were over 18,000 people living in the area. The poultry egg business has all but died away. There are no longer any chicken ranches in the area. Rio Linda has principally become a bedroom community for Sacramento. The population is growing much too quickly for those of us who continue to live in the area as we wish to retain the rural setting. Thank you.